So as you sit there quietly, you might like to pay attention to the things that you can hear. So if you listen beyond the sound of my voice and just listen out around your own home, what might be going on in other parts of your home, or listening out into the world outside your window. Sounds you can hear nearby, sounds that you can hear further away. And then listen out for the furthest away sound. And now listen back in for the sound of your own breath. And you might like to have a little yawn or a sigh. And if you'd like to open up your eyes, and we're going to make just a very simple little movement that is done in coordination with the breath. So nothing fancy, but just now as you breathe in, could you make a little circle with your arms? And maybe you just lightly touch your fingers together. And as you breathe out, bring your arms back around and rest the backs of your hands lightly on your knees or your thighs. I'm gonna do about eight of these actually, quite a few. They can be quite small little circles or if you feel more that you want big movements, it could be a big movement. But I invite you to just find where that feels comfortable. Inhaling, circling the arms up, lightly touching fingers, exhaling, back down. At your pace. At your speed. So your breath might go a little bit faster than mine or your breath might be a little bit slower than mine. And then we're gonna make this movement, let's say three times more. And I always feel there's something about this movement, although it's very simple, that just feels very containing. Like when I finished, it's like I've marked out my space and created a little container around myself for my practice. So at the end of your next one, if you just like to let your hands settle down on your lap, you could have your palms turned up or your palms turned down. And see how that feels now just after that simple practice. So in a minute we're going to move on to doing some restorative practice lying down. To get the most from this session there's a couple of anatomical points that I wanted to make. So I've brought my model skeleton, my model spine out with me um, this evening. I've also brought my own spine which is inside my body and you also have brought your own spines, which are actually far more interesting than these models, but I have brought this one as well, in case that's helpful. So there are three bony landmarks that I'd like to just make sure we all understand and we all know what I mean when I say these words. And the first of these bony landmarks is the sacrum. So if I just hold this up, I hope you can see it okay. This is on the model pelvis. This is the back of the pelvis, and the sacrum is this kind of flat bone in the back of the pelvis on my own body, it's here. And if you feel on your own body, you come down sort of the curve in the back of your waist and then to the, to the very back of the pelvis, and there's a wide flat bone there, and that's the sacrum, or the sacred bone, the sacrum in the back of the base of the pelvis. And on the very end of the sacrum, the very base of the spine, is the coccyx. I don't know if you can see that very well, um, but there's the coccyx, little pointy bone at the end, or the tail, the tailbone, coccyx, tailbone. Um, and sometimes 
it's quite helpful to imagine that your coccyx is actually a lovely long swooshy tail, like a cat's tail. Um, so you have a sense of where that is and how that feels. So sacrum and coccyx. Up at the other end of the spine. Mm -hmm. um, so here, this bone here is called the occiput or the occipital bone. So it's the wide flat bone in the base of the skull. If you put your hand on the back of your neck and slide it up, and just where you feel the neck meets the base of the, the head, the back of the head, wide and flat there, that's the occipital bone, the occiput. Um, and it actually, used, it feels quite nice just to do that, doesn't it? Just to support that part of your head, let your head lean back a little bit into your hand and feel that part of the skull supported. So we're going to be working um, with that in our practice this evening. The third bony landmark I wanted to point out if you don't count the coccyx as number two. So sacrum and coccyx as one, sacrum. Occiput, two. So the third one is the, the joint or the junction between C7 and T1. So all the vertebrae in the spine are, have got numbers, letters and numbers. So we've got seven cervical vertebrae, 12 thoracic vertebrae and five lumbar vertebrae. So, and they, and they go down, so we've got C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it, and that's the cervical vertebra, and then we go on to the thoracic, the thoracic T, one down to 12, and then the lumbar L, one down to five, and then you've got your sacrum. So what we're interested in tonight is where C, seven meets T, one, and it's actually easier to feel on your own body than it is to see on here really it's, it's a sort of sticky out lumpy joint at the base of your neck i'm going to put my bones down so on your own body if you feel the back of your neck slide your hand down a little bit and where you feel that knobbly lump sticking out that's what we're looking for that joint there c7 t1 or up for ease i'll call it c7 c7 okay so we've got sacrum occiput and C7, and these are the bony landmarks that are gonna help us with our restorative practice this evening. I'm taking off the scarf for the time being, um, and I'm going to uh, lie down, and what you might wanna do is watch what I'm gonna do, and then lie down yourself if you've got your computer set up in such a way that once you lie down, you won't be able to see anything. So I'm gonna be lying down, with just one prop. Okay, no, two props. <laughs> and I'm choosing to use these two pretty cushions, uh, which happen to be about the same size and shape, which in fact happen to be completely identical, um, but they don't have to be identical. So two, two kind of standard um, sofa type cushions, throw cushions. And what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take out my hair clip, is lie down. And the first cushion goes in under your head. So the pointy bit, if you take the, the pointy bit of your cushion and slide it in under your head and all the way in, so it pads C7. So it goes quite far in and down under your neck. So that lumpy bone on the base of your neck is actually gonna be on the cushion. The second cushion goes under the occipital bone, and I suggest you put that one in square. So you take the, the flat edge of that second cushion and slide it in just so it supports the occiput. And hopefully what will have happened is that your head is now slightly tilted. So your forehead is a little bit higher than your chin and it's like you're looking down into the center of your chest. And we're going to keep our knees bent, plant the feet a little wider than hip width, turn the toes inward and let the knees roll in so the knees can prop each other up. If that doesn't feel good for your hips, keep your feet hip width apart and knees, feet, hips, all hip width apart. If it feels nice, then you can do this wider feet and knees turned in. And once you've got that settled, I'm gonna suggest you just lay your arms down by your sides, 
Turn your palms face upwards. Let your eyes close and have a little sigh. And we're going to spend about two minutes in this position. And the thing about restorative yoga is once you've set up the posture, there is nothing else to do. So we're not moving. We're not really trying to do anything. We don't particularly need to do anything with our breath. It really literally is just lying there and not doing anything. <laughs> which strangely can be quite difficult. So what we're trying to do is use the props, use the equipment to make the body so comfortable that it feels easier, that you have this sense of, ah, oh, that's quite nice actually, that's quite pleasant. And it might be that as we settle into this practice that it feels good to have some slightly longer, deeper breaths or some yawns. Oh. But even the breathing, there's no special breathing technique. It's just settling. Maybe you feel the long line of connection from the base of your skull all the way down the middle of your back to the back of your pelvis. So the long line of connection between the occipital bone and the sacrum. And you might also notice in this position how the, the quite a lot of the back is in contact with the floor. So we've set this up so that there's gonna be slight flexion in the spine, which means your lower back on a lot of you is probably actually touching the floor. There might be a small gap still for some of you, but you're flattening out slightly the curve in the back of the waist. So as much as possible of your back is in contact with the floor. And that can feel really quite soothing. So we're just going to stay with this for another 30 seconds or so. And then what I'd like you to do, don't worry about sitting up again and watching, just, just listen to my verbal instructions. And if you do get in a muddle, you can look up and peek in a minute as I'll do it along with you. So what we're going to do now is adjust the position just very slightly. So leave your knees where they are, leave your leg, knees bent up, knees bent. Take both of your cushions out from underneath your head. And rest your arms if they'll go up above your head. So you're gonna reach your arms above your head or if that's not comfortable for your shoulders, take your arms out to the sides. So they're not going to be down on your mat, close to the body. You want to take your arms out, away from the sides of the body, or up above your head. And ideally, you want your elbows on the floor. So take your arms wide enough apart that you can let your elbows settle down on the floor. So it might mean you're a little bit like the angel of the north. So for my local people that know what I'm talking about, we've got this lovely statue um, in Gateshead, the Angel of the North. You can Google it if you're not familiar. And um, with, with a big wide, it's made out of um, aeroplane wings. It's got big wide wings. So Angel of the North, gesture with the arms, or you can take your arms up above your head. And... Notice what's shifted. So maybe now there's a little bit more space between 
the back of the neck and the floor. And there's a little bit more space at the back of the waist. So I'm guessing now there's a gap between the back of the waist and the floor. And if you like, you can increase that gap. So if you let the front of your body open up a little bit, roll your tailbone or your coccyx slightly towards your feet. Let the belly lift and open and exaggerate or accentuate the lumbar curve. So the curve at the back of your waist. And breathe into that for a breath, a nice deep breath. And then relax that and see if you can press your lower back more firmly to the floor. So you're going to be putting your sacrum more firmly on the floor, pressing the, your lower back more firmly to the floor, feeling how that changes the arrangement of your spine. And then you might open up your belly again and roll your tailbone towards the floor. And you could make that a little therapeutic movement that you do. Just to see how that's feeling, just to see whether you feel more comfortable with more extension in your spine. So that's where we've got that big curve at the back of the waist. Or maybe you feel more comfortable with more flexion where you flatten the curve and press your lower back to the floor. So this, is, this isn't really a restorative pose. This is a bit of an experiment that we're doing before we try our next position. So a little bit of movement between extension and flexion lying on your back. And then Settling where you feel most comfortable, bend your knees in towards your chest one by one. Just hug your knees. You could have a little rock on your back. And then when you're ready, if you could roll over onto one side and from your side, come back up to sitting. Okay. Okay. So the next um, restorative pose we're going to do is one that supports us with that extension, that little bit of a back bend. So opening through the front of the body and that deep curve in the back of the waist. And what I have learned from teaching yoga um, to lots of different people in lots of different places, with, with lots of different kinds of bodies, is some people love that direction of movement, love that shape and other people find it isn't so comfortable. And so I want you to be really, um, I just want you to be really honest with yourself about whether or not this genuinely feels delicious because restorative yoga is meant to feel delicious. And if it doesn't feel delicious, it's not restorative yoga. So it doesn't mean it's not yoga, but it's not the, the experience that I'd like for you to have this evening. So this next one, it looks almost the same as what we've just done. We're going to lie down, bend the knees. If it's comfortable, have the knees um, rolled towards each other. But this time you take one or both of your cushions and you're going to lift up your hips and pop them in under the back of your pelvis. Now, if you like the extension, moving into a bit of back bend, what I suggest you do is put these cushions quite high up your back so your tailbone actually kind of drops off the end. Um, so we're moving from the Angel of the North here to the Tyne Bridge, so a big bridge that goes over the River Tyne in Newcastle and makes a, a big arch like this, kind of rainbow shape. So this is a, a supported bridge pose essentially. You want to feel that your belly's opening and lifting, the bottom ribs rolling open and, and lifting, and you take your arms out to the sides or like we just practiced up above your head. The, Weight of the head should be resting on the occipital bone, but you don't put anything there under your head because we're looking for the head to be down and then the belly to be up and then the tail to be down. So it makes this bridge shape. If your head does not feel comfortable with the pelvis lifted in that way, put less padding under the pelvis. So just go for less volume 
less amplitude. So just a little lift is enough. If it feels a bit strong or kind of ouchy in your lower back, put the cushion more towards your tail. So there's, it's gonna um, make, take out a little bit of the, of the deep curve there. So it's really important that everybody does some experiments with this and finds where it feels most delicious, bearing in mind that we are moving in the direction, if we can, of extension or back bending or front opening. So according to your taste and according to what feels good in your body, you set that up. I'm going to suggest you keep your knees bent, let the knees roll together, and then once you're settled again, let your eyes close. And we're going to stay with this shape for about two minutes. Placing the arms so that your elbows can settle heavily. So your elbows can release, the upper arms can release. Noticing the feeling of your breath not necessarily doing anything about your breath or changing your breath, just having the experience of being in a body that has breath, letting itself in and letting itself out. Surrendering the weight of your body into the force of gravity. So it's like you are held safely to the earth. Nowhere to fall. You've already landed. We're going to stay with this shape just for another 30 seconds or so. So two or three nice, maybe slightly deeper breaths just as you start to think about moving and shifting position. And then when you're ready, what, what the best thing to do really is to push down into your feet, lift your hips, take your cushion or your cushions back out from underneath your pelvis. And then once again, you could bring your knees one by one towards your chest. Give them a little hug, have a little rock on your back. If you feel like you might like to open your hips a little bit, you could um, reach your hands between your knees, catch your feet. And do the, the happy baby pose, Ananda Balasana. And then when you're ready, rolling over onto one side and coming on back up to sitting. So I couldn't really see very well. Um, once you're all lying on the floor, I can't see, really see very well um, how it looks. So I'm gonna hope that you managed to get that comfy and enjoyed that. Um, we're gonna now learn the, the head wrapping thing. Um, I, I've been reflecting all day on the best way to teach this um, in, and in, what, in which order, in what order. So I think probably the best thing to do is to show you the pose that we're about to do before you wrap your head up, if you wish to wrap your head up, um, so that you'll know um, what we're going to do. Because it's a bit like, um, once you've done this, it's a bit like you blindfolded. Um, not everybody feels drawn to wrapping their head. Um, so it's absolutely not necessary if you don't like the look of it, or if you give it a go and it doesn't feel right, then um, just take it off, take the head wrap off. Um, the posture that we're going to do once we've wrapped up our head, those of us that want to, 
is a bit like what we've just done, only we're going to be putting our feet up. And I'm going to show you this before I wrap my head up and before I show you how to wrap your head up um, so that you, so I can just give you a couple of pointers. I'm actually going to leave the chair where it is and extend my mat out um, into the room this way a little bit. So this blanket isn't really part of the restorative pose. This is just me making my mat um, as if I had a mat going this way to the chair. And we're going to do a position where you lie on, the lie on the floor, feet on the chair, and the two cushions, one for C7. So I'm going to put the pointy end of the cushion in under C7. And then the flat edge of the second cushion under the occipital bone. So I've got this um, slightly dropped down head position and a nice, and my back feels great, really nicely pressed towards the floor and comfortable. What I really wanted to show you here is something with the legs. So um, what can feel really nice is to lift the leg and it's like you're, you're taking the flesh of the calf out, away from the midline of the body. So when you put your leg down, you end up with a nice, like a nice feeling of the knee and the hip and the ankle all in a nice straight line. So I do the same on this side, you can straighten the leg, turn it in a little bit. You don't have to even touch your calf, you just have this sense of that part of your leg moving away from the midline of the body. And then when you put it down, your legs won't want to roll outwards so much anymore. If you like, you can actually do it like this and move the, the legs. And then if you've got something that you can put, you get this cushion on top, like a cushion or a weighty blanket or a wheat pack. Or if you've got a cat that you can convince to sit on your legs, that can feel really good as well. So this is the posture that we're going to do. We're going to spend a few minutes, let's say five minutes with this one, and then shift it. So you take the cushions out from underneath your head, disturb your legs as little as possible, lift your hips and slide the props in under your pelvis. And again, you're, you're kind of looking for that sweet spot for you where you've got a little bit of extension. So the belly's lifted and open, the ribs are opening, the arms can come out to the side and a bit of backward bend. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time like this. But before we do those two postures, we're going to do the head wrapping. And then when you lie down, your head will be all wrapped up. And I'll leave you five minutes in the first pose. Ring the bell, then you can shift to the second pose. Or if you, if you know that you feel more comfortable with that flexion pattern, you might prefer just to stay with the first pose. So it will be up to you. Okay, so make sure you've got everything ready and close to you that you're going to need. Because if you want to do this head wrapping technique, once you've wrapped up your head, you might find it difficult to see either me or the stuff around you in your living room. I'm just gonna put on my socks in a very pointed and deliberate way to remind you that if you haven't already got nice warm socks on, you will, you'll be grateful for them with this practice. This, this um, practice, we're gonna be staying a little bit longer. So make sure you've got your warm socks on. Um, make sure you're near your chair, you've got something to lie on, you've got your couple of cushions. If there's something weighty you can put on your legs, like a heavy blanket or a wheaty pack um, or your cat, then gather that, gather that all nearby to you. And then grab your scarf and it's quite nice to fold it in half lengthways so it's nice and smooth. And you find the middle, I'm gonna fold it in half again, mine's quite big. So I'm, you find the middle and you put the very middle of the scarf on your forehead. So this is the frontal bone, more anatomy. And it can feel quite relaxing just to 
just to slide your hand down your forehead like that. Ooh. Okay, so that's sort of what we're doing with the scarf. You can slide it down a little bit or just place it there on the frontal bone. Don't cover your eyes at this point. Just put the scarf on the forehead. Leave your eyes uncovered, although you might find they want to close. So you wrap the scarf now around the back of the occiput and cross. You don't tie a knot. You just cross. So the scarf crisscrosses around the back of the occipital bone. And then these two long edges, you can bring around and tie a, um, just one knot. So don't tie like a big deep knot. Just here and make sure it's right in the middle. If it's off to one side, it's gonna be distracting. You might find you don't need a knot once you're lying down. It's really important that you don't do this too tight. You'll know it's too tight because you'll be able to feel your blood pumping around your head and it's not a pleasant feeling. So if it's too tight, undo it and loosen it a little bit. The feeling you want is just sort of containment. It, it's quite comforting. It's intended to be comforting. If it's not comforting, it might be too tight or it might just not be for you. So don't do it if it's not comforting. I'm suggesting this as something that if you if your head is like mine at the minute and very busy and fuzzy and um, all over the place, this can feel really nice. And then once you've got that nice pressure, if it's nice for you, round your occiput, round the frontal bone. See, just here, I've got like a little thin layer of scarf that I can pull down over my eyes, but it's not pressure. So you don't want to have pressure on your eyeballs. Just a little bit of cover to keep the light out. Okay, and at this point, I'm now blindfolded and can't really see anything anymore in what I'm doing. So what I might be tempted to do is just peek my eyes out again so I can get set up. So once that's once you've got your headgear, you can embark on your journey into this restorative posture. So knees up on the couch or the chair. Calves turned out away from the midline of the body. And first off, we're going to put, or I'm going to put this heavy cushion on my shins. You could put a blanket there. And then the two pillows, so you've got the pointy edge that goes under C7. And then the second one, the straight edge goes under the occipital bone. And once you've got that all settled, if you want to then pull your blindfold down to cover your eyes, you can. You could spread your arms out wide or you can rest your hands over your lower belly. And we are gonna be staying in this posture for about five minutes. And then making that slight adjustment to the second one where we've got the um, cushions under the pelvis. So I'm going to come out of the position and sit up, but I don't want you to do that. I'd like you to stay. If you're not quite settled yet, if you've got little wiggles or fidgets that you need to do, do those. If you find having the scarf wrapped around your head is not comforting, is not delicious, is not soothing, take it off. An, an alternative is just to lay the scarf lightly over your eyes to block the light out of your eyes or to use an eye pillow. Make sure that your arms feel comfortable. You don't want your arms too close to the sides of the body. Not the upper arms anyway. Keep the upper arms a little bit away from the sides of the body. Feel that long line of connection between the occipital bone in the base of the skull and the sacrum, the sacred bone in the back of the pelvis. 
that long line of connection between those two wide, flat, bony structures in the back of the body. Feel that space as if it were ever so slightly lengthening. As if as you lay here in this resting pose, your tail might be traveling in the direction of your feet. And the base of your skull might be traveling in the direction of your head. Be aware of the contact between the back of your body and the earth, the support at your back. And with a long exhale, see if you can release even a little bit more of your weight down. See if you can allow yourself to be held. To be supported. Let your muscles gently relax their grip on your bones. Allow your face to become soft and smooth. Make sure you're not biting down on your back teeth. Release the jaw and the throat. You could yawn. Oh. Or swallow. And allow for your attention to drop down and in. As if looking down into the center of your chest. Be aware of your breath. And make no effort to change or control your breath. Instead of taking the breath in, see if you might simply receive it, allow it. As you feel yourself settling into this supported pose, I invite you to make a choice now about whether you wish to experiment with changing your cushions around and moving more into that slight extension pattern with your back and putting the cushions underneath your pelvis and letting the front body open or whether you prefer just to stay exactly as you are. So the intention of this next part of the practice is really that you just find a place to settle, find a, a way, a shape in your body that feels really good, that feels really supported, that doesn't feel like a stretch. 
So a little bit of a sense of opening is good, but you don't want to actually be stretching because we don't want to be resisting anything. So we're looking for a shape to rest in now that just feels... Oh. So if you know you enjoy that little bit of a, of a back bend shape and you want to make that transition now, disturbing yourself as little as possible, just taking the cushions out from behind your head and sliding them in instead underneath your pelvis. Then I invite you to do that now. And if you're just completely already just perfect as you are, there is absolutely no reason to make any movement whatsoever. And once I have a sense that everybody's settled in their chosen shape, in their chosen restorative asana, restorative pose, then I'd like to offer you a little breathing practice, which is optional because you might find that actually it's not needed. But if you find that that busy fuzzy head is, is kind of still very busy, I'm gonna offer you a little breathing practice. I'm gonna leave you with that breathing practice and then um, allow some silence. And I'll let you know when it's time to get up again by ringing my bell three times. So until that point, until you hear the bell ring three times, there is absolutely no requirement for you to make any further movement. There is nothing that you need to do. There is nobody that you need to please. There's nothing to be achieved. This is space to just be. And to just be breathed. If you find it helpful to work a little bit with your breath in these kinds of practices, I invite you now to align your attention with the midline of your body. And enjoy a slow and centering breath. So you slowly bring your breath in and slowly guide your breath out. And then at the end of that controlled, deliberate breath, settle back into a more normal, natural breathing pattern. Easy breath, natural breath. Let the breath come in and out naturally three or four times. Just normal breath in, normal breath out. Normal breath in, normal breath out. And then again, aligning your attention with the center line of the body. Enjoy a slow and centering breath. So you're slowly guiding your breath in. Slowly guiding your breath out. and then back to normal breathing. And see if you can just watch the breath doing its own thing. Can you catch yourself in the act of being breathed? Normal breath in, normal breath out. Normal breath in, normal breath out. And then after three or four normal breaths, or just when you feel like it's the right moment for you, align your attention with the midline of the body. And slow breath in, slow breath out. So I'd like to invite you to continue with that practice for as long as it serves you, or until you hear me ring the bell three times.
Now welcome in the sound of the bell and welcome in the other sounds that you can hear around you in your space where you are. The sounds of things going on in other parts of your house perhaps, maybe there's other people around you or maybe the building itself has sounds, creaks or pipes. Can you cast your sense of hearing out into the world outside your window, out into the world around you. What can you, can, what can you hear there? And maybe you don't hear anything, but our sense of hearing gives us a really lovely sense of space, all that space around us. Cast your sense of hearing out far and wide, listen for the furthest sound. And then gather it in and listen for the sound of your own breath. And you might like to deepen your breath or yawn or sigh. Ooh, and welcome in touch sensation. Feel the touch of your body resting on the floor, on your couch, on your chair, on your cushions. Feel the texture of clothing and blankets around your skin, against your skin. Feel the texture of that wrap that you placed around your head. Feel the touch sensation of your breath. Gently wriggle your fingers and wriggle your toes. And connect with your senses of smell and taste. You could lick your lips or run your tongue along your teeth. You may or may not feel ready to open your eyes, but you could look into the space behind your closed eyes and just have a really clear picture of where you are where you are, what the room is like that you're in, where you are in the room. Know that our restorative uh, practice is drawing to a close. And if you've got your cushions under your pelvis, you might want to take them out. And then you can hug your knees towards your chest and have a little rock on your back. And then I'd like to invite you to roll over onto one side and come back up to sitting again. And if that's okay, I'd like to just close with a short seated practice. So take your time, wriggle and stretch, roll to one side, come on back up to sitting. If you want to gather in um, a little closer to your um, cameras so that we kind of can see each other again. Whenever you're on your map, you're never alone, even if you're not on Zoom. So if you're watching this class later or just when you do your own practice, there's always someone else somewhere in the world who's on their map as well. You're never on your own. And you can think of us all <laughs> and we're all together. So a little practice to close from seated. If you sit with your hands, your palms um, turned down, actually palms turned down on your lap. And to begin, it's, it's, I'm gonna raise my hands so you can see them clearly, but you can have yours on your lap and you just breathe in and you turn your palms up and you breathe out and you turn your palms down. And see if you can get into a nice rhythm with that, not too fast, not too slow, but just inhale, turn the palms up, exhale, turn the palms down. Okay, and then leave your palms down on your lap. And with an inhalation, just lift your right palm up out into the space in front of you. And as you exhale, bring it across onto the left side of your chest and you tuck your chin slightly and like you're looking down towards that hand. 
and leave your hand there for a whole round of breath in and out. And then with your inhale, lift your palm forward and exhale, place the palm of your hand back down in your lap. So we go to the other side, inhaling, lift the left palm, exhaling onto the right side of your chest, tuck the chin, leave your hand there for a full round of breath in and out. And then inhale, lift the left palm forward and exhale, place it back down on your lap. So we're going to do that twice more in your own time to each side. Each time you leave your hand on your chest for one full round of breath, in and out. Last round now, so you inhale, lift your right palm. Exhale, bring it onto the left side of the chest. Tuck your chin, stay for a breath. Inhale, raise the palm and exhale, place it back down in your lap. And when you finish, just sit with both palms turned upward, both palms turned away from your body. You could tuck your chin, close your eyes, lift your heart and drop your brain. Pay attention to the sensations in the palms of your hands. And then with an inhalation, bring the palms of your hands together and exhaling, guide them into the center of your chest. Namaste.